Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Saturday. The weekend is upon us, and for some of us, i uh, got a three-day weekend. Hopefully you do. What do we got for uh, activity brewing up here on the sun? We did have an M-flare overnight. By the way, it is uh, September, uh, September 2nd, 2023, about 12.03 p.m. California time. We had an M flare, um, M3.3 kickoff from a far side sunspot. Uh, that's going to be the source of the uh, little bit of uptick here overnight. This is that same sunspot that did produce that long duration M flare um, on the 1st. I think that was late on the 31st there of uh, August. But uh, either way, an active region, which is no longer in view, did produce an M3.3 overnight. Uh, and pretty much out of sight, out of mind. We can barely see it out here on the western limb as far as the magnetic lines go within that sunspot. So that's going to be the source 3413, which did look pretty complex last night. But uh, again, that is heading off and away from the visible disc. No longer visible over here on the east or western limb, excuse me. Eastern limb, not uh, not too much going on over here. Things are very quiet once again. The sunspot regions that did show a little bit of hope in producing some flaring activity as as they came around the bend, so to speak, are uh, degrading rapidly. Look at these. <laughs> There's not much left of them. They've spread out, and uh, they're all stable. So we're left with a sun that uh, does not harbor any um, too much potential now, at least on the earth-facing side of any flares we may see that region on the uh, western limb continue to throw off a couple flares though on the far side of the sun so overall threat 85 percent chance for a c flare m flare 25 x flare around five percent chance and that's due to well the sunspot regions that are now out of sight did have a little bit of uptick here overnight in the uh, solar weather department including the kp index ramping up slightly uh, earlier last night and this morning, it looks like, had a G1 solar storm venture in, sparking up some auroras up there around the polar regions. Now, that is expected to continue potentially here um, into tonight. Let's see here. UTC time. That's going to be uh, yeah, a little bit later tonight, around dark. Perfect timing. Uh, for this expected G1 class storm. Now, I'm not for not 100% certain if this is just an arrival, early arrival of that forecasted G1 storm or, or not. But we'll see uh, if this comes to uh, materialize later on this evening. But we did see it peak out here around the KP Index 1 G1 class storm. KP Index here of 5, just over 5. All right, uh, let's see what we got for earthquake activity. Anything ramping up overnight? New Zealand still sitting quiet down there. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii still showing some movement with the latest quake at 2.2, just outside the uh, Kilauea volcano. Still down there, though, about a kilometer or so below the surface. We really haven't seen any swarming up towards the surface. Uh, the latest... Let's check out the uh, latest activity here across Kilauea Volcano. I'm going to bring down some instruments and uh, I just kind of want to see the camera range out here. I know these guys do have, uh, I think they still have their YouTube channel up showing the Kilauea Volcano, but I'm just going to check this one out here from the Caldera, the observation camera, HVO observation camera here. Pretty nice view. Looks like a clear day out there. A few clouds floating around the big island. A little bit of steam down here across the crater or lava lake here at Kilauea Volcano, but um, really have, haven't really seen any major uptick in terms of uh, increasing gas concentrations or smoke. So that lava, or magma I should say, is still down below the surface. We'll continue to watch that, of course. <clears throat> All right, California, what do we got here? Anything major going on across the southern portion of the state? Doesn't look like it. A handful of smaller quakes in the last hour around the San Jacinto Fault Zone. And uh, looks like maybe a couple on the San Andreas Fault here. We're just off of it. But uh, no major swarms. No major unusual activity to note there in Southern California. Got a little creeping activity here along the creeping segment 
of the San Andreas Fault. And uh, Northern California, well, about the same. Really haven't seen too much uptick here. 2.0, 2.0. Uh, 27 kilometers deep here at the Cascadia subduction zone, the southern end of that mega thrust area. Up into the Pacific Northwest, well, some smaller earthquake activity. Uh, I don't think they're going to be reporting too much activity out there today, so what I want to do is double check the uh, recorded seismographs overnight on Mount St. Helens, since that's been our active uh, area to watch far as earthquake activity goes. It's been showing a little bit of elevated movement here there's all the earthquakes over the last couple days and in, in the last two weeks so we're going to check out this station here and see what we have far as the activity goes overnight at this area of mount st helens right there at the uh the summit area maybe right here it definitely looks like maybe another earthquake and some smaller ones these are generally very small in themselves probably a one point or a 1.2 and you have to think how much smaller these other ones are. So no major swarm, no major movement, not even any moderate movement here at Mount St. Helens. Just a handful of smaller, very small earthquakes for now. Um, Oklahoma, a couple twos, even a three out there in Texas last night outside of Pecos in the oil fields. Puerto Rico area showing a slight uptick here across the eastern edge of the subduction zone down around the Dominica area. Looks like uh, mostly twos, though, are the magic number around the Puerto Rico area. We did see a 3.7 up here on the Puerto Rico Trench, to be exact, uh, about 32 kilometers deep. South America region, got a handful of quakes down there as well. Looks like a 5.3 and a 4.9 overnight. This was somewhat quiet. Um, yesterday so it looks like things starting to pick back up um, a couple deeper earthquakes there underneath peru there's a 5.3 to 150 kilometers deep adding some further strain upstream i'll we'll continue to watch that uh, for some movement new zealand not a whole lot going on uh, across the new zealand area let's check out the earthquake activity here there's that 3.8 from yesterday i don't think we've seen anything kick back up following that 3.8 down there on the uh, South Island area of New Zealand. A look at the seismograph drums here. A couple smaller quakes it looks like on the um, kind of in between the North and South Island area from last night. But uh, there's that three-pointer. Showed up pretty nicely down here across South Island area. But uh, since then there's really not a whole lot showing up here so quiet once again Fiji area well this is the Tonga Trench this morning a 4.9 getting that deep earthquake activity once again but a little bit further it looks like it's a little bit further south here approaching the Kermadec Trench this area's got to be uh, primed for some movement Kermadec Trench really hasn't seen too much activity here in recent terms most of it's all been confined up here uh, in the areas of the Tonga Trench, far as deeper activity goes. Uh, slight movement here across the uh, Papua New Guinea area. Some of that movement from last night, although the latest quake here in this area, a 4.2 around the Banda Sea. Up into the Kurokamachaka Trench, of course, we had that uh, somewhat of a larger earthquake yesterday, 4.6 or uh, 6.1 at 146 kilometers deep. Haven't really seen too much movement following that. Looks like a uh, a little bit of strain building up here across the Russia area from that deeper movement uh, with a four-pointer, 4.4, pretty shallow at about 10 kilometers, kicking off just a few hours ago. And around Iran, fours look to be the magic number out there as well. Uh, overall, though, Mediterranean area showing a little bit more uh, darker color rings today, indicating some older movement, mostly from yesterday. So not a whole lot kicking off there currently today. And the Atlantic Ocean, well, that's pretty quiet. So we'll see how today brings about. It looks like maybe there's a... Was there another newer 4.5 over here around Japan? Yes, we missed that. So we did see... Well, this 4.6. That's a little bit further south along the Kurokamachaka, but still pretty deep, 100 kilometers deep here into the subduction zone 
And then late last night, there was a 4.5 just off the coast here of Tokyo, Japan, into the Japan Trench. So elevated movement across this area of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Plate boundaries definitely uh, showing some activity here in the subduction zones. All right, uh, what else we got, folks? Anything going on at uh, Yellowstone National Park? Beautiful area up there, but that's a, just kind of like, like a once-in-a-lifetime event. I could probably go up there every year if there wasn't so much traffic, but uh, I did it once, and that's all I care to do. Beautiful scenery, but it's pretty much like driving in a big city surrounded by wilderness and trees. Um, I could do without the traffic. Uh, there is something over here around the eastern edge of the park. <clears throat> Let's see here. Looks looks like it's more so around the eastern edge. I'm talking about this signature right here in the last few minutes. Um, let me bring up the, the map here. I don't really see anything locally here that would trigger that earthquake. I haven't really seen any large-scale events either that would be a distant type of signature but that a little signature right there showing up across the graph mainly well let's see here kind of hard to tell with these little earthquakes that they show up broadly across the uh, area of the network on the stations here but you know there's really no distinct station that shows it the most intense this one over here might just be tuned slightly a little bit more sensitive that's why it's picking up a little bit larger but if you look at these nearby stations they're locally here within this one they're about the same as far as that reading goes so this looks to be to me some type of uh not local larger seismic activity now where it's at i don't know um i don't see anything showing up here on the map let's go over here to the emsc model see if they're reporting any earthquake activity that we don't know about there from the usgs <clears throat> I don't see any large scale events. Nothing being reported there across the states that would give me that indicator that that is the earthquake in question, but looks like something. So we'll have to keep back, uh, we'll have to check back here a little bit later, see if anything gets put up on the map. Uh, but aside from that, uh, that little signature, for the most part, uh, not a whole lot of activity there at Yellowstone. As far as the uh, earthquake activity goes, all right, Storm Prediction Center, what do we got here for weather? Just no severe thunderstorm risk, it looks like, today, according to the Storm Prediction Center. Mostly uh, just thunderstorms. No severe weather mixed in there, folks, so that's a good sign. Here's our outlook for today. Down across portions of Arizona, Nevada, Utah area, getting in on some much-needed precipitation. Here in California, there was a bunch of rain west of me up into the mountain range here of the coastal range. Up by Elk Creek northward, uh, Pasquina area, all seen a whole bunch of ra rain last night, but uh, we got gypped. There was nothing here that fell around the Chico area. All right, numerical models, let's check out these uh, long-term models and see what we got as far as hurricane potentials go. Got one spinning out here in the Pacific. That, of course, will be well away from California, not directed this time. And... Um, not a whole lot stirring up out here in the Gulf of Mexico. Notice that. There's some some type of tropical development here off the coast of Florida. Um, but again, we'll see if, how that plays out. Last night, when we checked this, it kind of showed up somewhat of a major hurricane out here clipping the east coast and then taking off towards the uh, northeast. But as you can see, even since last night, that has changed. So, you know, anything way out there down the road, far as the forecast goes, is not really all that uh, dependable, trustworthy. There's our low pressure system out here in California, keeping us cool. About 74 degrees right now. Uh, I could easily be well above 100 degrees right now here where I live. September is a very hot month for us. So I'll take 74 over 110 any day. That trough will continue to deepen here along the California area, scoot off towards the northeast here, uh, and bring some cooler weather out your way in the northern plains. And behind that, looks like another uh, low pressure wants to develop back here across the Pacific Northwest. Um, 
And again, way down the road, it's hard to say, but far as the near-term models go, there's a lot of heat out there across this area of the country. I know I've, I've been seeing people complain about it all over the uh, social media world. These are current temperatures out here right now um, across Texas. Well, Texas cooks, right? Texas is a, a very hot state. That's why I can't, I don't think I could ever move out there. Uh, in the, I love Texas, I do, to visit. But I have to be somewhere where it gets a little bit cooler. Uh, I know my area is of interest right now for down the road, uh, Nebraska, Kansas area um, is hot right now, but they don't stay hot like that. Not like Texas all year. But either way, got 90s, upper 90s, stretching all the way up close to uh, Minnesota. St. Paul, Minnesota, 91 degrees. Bismarck, North Dakota, 89. Goodness. <laughs> Woo, but that's not going to last for long, okay? I think next week or uh, when is it, about Wednesday or so, you got that troughing coming in. Notice that, keeping the heat down in Texas um, and providing some relief up here to these states. So it's getting to be that time of year where the patterns are um, increasing in terms of troughs developing and, um, <clears throat> you know, different uh, types of weather developing out here. I want to check out the whole polar regions here, see what we got brewing up here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Is this one going to let me show it? There we go. Um, troughing out here, we kind of look for signs of movement up around the polar regions in terms of what could play a part further down into the states. Right now, there's a lot of troughing going on up there. Notice those cold areas developing. That's a sign that winter is coming for sure. And uh, what, what kind of a winter it will be? Well, that's definitely uh, something to chat about because we are into an El Nino pattern. And that's expected along the west coast of California. El Nino, of course, affects uh, the states in many different ways. Pacific Northwest up here, they get gypped. Uh, they get gypped on their rainfall. It's a little bit drier for the uh, folks in Washington and Oregon. Well, California, Southern California, parts of Northern California as well get uh, much more sufficient rainfall from the El Nino pattern, which is expected to be a strong one. Uh, there's now a 60% chance of it being a strong El Nino. Um, but you, we, we, again, we just don't know exactly how strong, if it's going to be comparable to, uh, you know, the, the um, 1997, 98 event or 2015, 2016 event. That's uh, definitely uh, worth some wet years out here in California. All right, folks, um, I am going to jump off here for now and um, just kind of take it easy, enjoy this cooler weather. Hope everyone enjoys their weekend. Again, if you have a, uh, you know, three-day weekend, get out there, barbecue, enjoy it. Enjoy your, uh, you know, the, the little things in life, so to speak. Definitely have to enjoy the, the slow times. I'm not a fast-paced type of guy, even though it seems kind of fast-paced right now with school going on. Uh, but uh, I, I definitely enjoy the quieter times. All right, folks, have a good one. Stay safe out there. All looks calm across the graphs for now, um, but we will be standing by watching these. Have a good day. Take care.